Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. We are forming, for want of a better phrase, what I usually call a cup and handle or cup and saucer formation. It's a pretty common formation. You get a run up and then a bottom out. A lot of times the bottom goes to the last point of resistance where it failed the last time and then you kind of round off and go to a new high. You can see we had one here. This is a larger cup formation and you can see the breakout out of the cup it was a pretty violent move. It ran from approximately 31 to 34, about a $3 move. This is a pretty big cup. This is a January 1st through, it's a one and a half month cup. This cup here is about a third of that size, so maybe half a month. So I can't say how far it's gonna move. My expectation on this one is, I'm guessing $40, $39.50 to $40. You've got to remember that we are still in an increasing parabolic arc. Now you can see the cup here. Here's the other cup. There's a number of others. Here's one here. This is actually a very good example of that type of cup. And you can see the move was violent when we went out of the cup. Now some have question I don't uh, subscribe to most technical analysis concepts because I honestly believe most are bunk and some have asked me why I talk about these these cup formations and flag formations and I'm gonna go ahead and read some more of Jesse Livermore tonight because he is the father of all analysis really both technical and actually there's three types but it becomes fuzzy there's technical analysis there's fundamental analysis and there's also tape reading which is what I would consider to be a very very short-term technical analysis but there is a fine distinction there but I'm gonna go ahead and read some more Livermore tonight and hopefully it will help you understand how or why I consider these cup formations to actually be technical formations. Remember that the basis of all technical trading, although you got to remember I'm not a subscriber of most of the modern theories that have to do with stochastics and all kinds of complex stuff, but the basic basis of all technical analysis is simple support and resistance and remember the basis behind all support and resistance is the number of people who have a profit and the number of people who have a loss so you have to always remember a market right here right there actually at that point or there or there for that matter any market that is trading at a new all-time high that means that 100 percent of the longs are in the money everyone who is bullish and long the stock commodity whatever it is is making a profit so unless it's a scam or unless it's overbought or unless it's a panic or unless there's some intervening factor for the most part a market that's in a new all-time high will tend to go higher because the vast majority of people who are invested in it are showing a profit so they need a reason to sell to get out so again we're forming a cup we're getting a little sell-off here but the cup is still forming I don't think the technical format and that now that's not to say that cups don't fail they do and they can 
but this one seems to be following all the patterns that we've seen so far of the cups that have been forming and I'm expecting let's just use a swing rule here we'll mark the bottom of the cup and we actually have some cups we can look at here here's a cup here so let's just look at it it has a top on the left hand side of about 31 just for roughness let's call it 3125 and 3125 on this side and a low of about let's just say 25 six, uh, 2650 here so 2650 to 3125 we'll just round it off to 3150 and call it five dollars this is a five dollar cup now when we get out how far did we go well it would predict if the swing rule which roughly says that you'll go as much up when you get out as you went down in the size of it so a swing rule from 3150 would predict 3650 well look where we are 3650 is right about here so pretty good prediction on the swing rule did a real good job it's a bull market remember it's a bull market it's going up it's not a matter of whether it's going up it's a matter of how it goes up because it's going up so we've got another cup here and let's see the top of this one is let's say 3675 and we've got about 3350 let's just use those so 3350 that's $3.25 cents so 36.75 plus 25 cents is 37 40 dollars so the swing rule is giving us 40 dollars on the next move now that's not set in stone don't want to make any tips or anything else but just based on a standard swing rule of what we've been doing we can predict roughly forty dollars on the next move before we have a pullback now we could our MACD here is saying some things hopefully it breaks out of this and doesn't roll over but we'll just have to see so I wanted to segue into the Livermore writings and I went to my latest Livermore online and that link is now dead I have a new one and it's the same exact PDF with the pictures and everything because it's in the archives this one's at US uh, something .us .archive .org. so the book is in the public domain it's not like it can be banned or anything like that but I'm gonna go ahead and read Livermore's in his own words explanation of his understanding and conception of support and resistance and I think you'll see how that applies here I apologize if this goes too long I, I'm gonna come back and apply it to what we're looking at right now but it's it's very important that you understand this so Livermore says this matter of tape reading is not so complicated as it appears of course you need experience but it is even more important to keep certain fundamentals in mind to read the tape is not to have your fortune told the tape does not tell you how much you will surely be worth next Thursday at 1 35 p.m. the object of reading the tape is to ascertain first how and next when to trade that is whether it is wiser to buy than to sell it works exactly the same for stocks as for cotton or wheat or corn or oats you watch the market that is the course of prices as recorded by the tape with one object to determine the direction that is the price tendency prices we know will move either up or down according to the resistance they encounter for purposes of easy explanation we will say that prices like everything else move along the line of least resistance they will do whatever comes easiest therefore they will go up if there is less resistance to an advance than a decline and vice versa nobody should be puzzled as to whether a market is a bull or a bear market after it fairly starts the trend is evident to a man who has an open mind and reasonably clear sight for it is never wise for a speculator to fit his facts 
to his theories. Such a man will or ought to know whether it is a bull or a bear market. And if he knows that he knows whether if and if he knows that, he knows whether to buy or sell. It is therefore at the very inception of the movement that a man needs to know whether to buy or sell. Let us say, for example, that the market, as it usually does in those between swing times, fluctuates within a range of 10 points, up to 130 and down to 120. It may look very weak at the bottom or on the way up after the rise of 8 or 10 points. It may look as strong as anything. A man ought not to be led into trading by tokens. He should wait until the tape tells him that the time is ripe. As a matter of fact, millions upon millions of dollars have been lost by men who bought stocks because they looked cheap or sold them because they looked dear. The speculator is not an investor. His object is not to secure a steady, steady return on his money at a good rate of interest, but to profit by either a rise or a fall in the price of whatever he may be speculating in. Therefore, the thing to determine is the speculative line of least resistance at the moment of trading, and what he should wait for is the moment when that line defines itself, because that is his signal, to get busy. Reading the tape merely enables him to see that at 1.30 the selling had been stronger than the buying and a reaction in the price logically followed, up to the point where the selling prevailed over the buying, superficial students of the tape may conclude that the price is not going to stop short of 150 and they buy. But after the reaction begins, they hold on or sell out at a small loss or they go short and talk bearish. But at 120, there is stronger resistance to the decline. Now, that may be confusing to some. Livermore uses the term resistance to the decline. He's actually referring to support. But be that as it may, uh, 130 is the top and 120 is the bottom about this range he's talking about. The buying prevails over the selling. There is a rally and the shorts cover. The public is so often whipsawed that one marvels at their persistence in not learning their lesson. Eventually, something happens that increases the power of either the upward or the downward force and the point of greatest resistance moves up or down. That is, the buying at 130 will for the first time be stronger than the selling or the selling at 120 be stronger than the buying. The price will break through the old barrier or movement limit and go on. As a rule, there is always a crowd of traders who are short at 120 because it looks so weak or long at 130 because it looks so strong and when the market goes against them they are forced after a while either to change their minds and turn or to close out in either event they help to define even more clearly the price line of least resistance thus the intelligent trader who has patiently waited to determine this line will enlist the aid of fundamental trade conditions and also of the force of the trading of that part of the community that has happened to guess wrong and must now rectify their mistakes. Such corrections tend to push prices along the line of least resistance. And right here I will say that. Though I do not give it as a mathematical certainty or as an axiom of speculation, my experience has been that accidents, that is, the unexpected or the unforeseen, have always helped me in my market position whenever the latter has been based upon my determination of the line of least resistance. Do you remember that Union Pacific episode at Saratoga that I told you about? Well, I was long because I found out that the line of least resistance was upward. I should have stayed long instead of letting my broker tell me that insiders were selling stocks. It didn't make any difference what was going on in the directors' minds. 
That was something I couldn't possibly know, but I could and did know that the tape said, going up. And then came the unexpected raising of the dividend rate and 30-point rise in the stock. At 164, prices looked mighty high, but as I told you before, stocks are never too high to buy or too low to sell. The price, per se, has nothing to do with establishing the line of least resistance. You will find in actual practice that if you trade, as I have indicated, any important piece of news given out between the closing of one market and the opening of another is usually in harmony with the line of least resistance. The trend has been established before the news is published, and in bull markets, bear items are ignored and bull news exaggerated and vice versa. Before the war broke out, the market was in a very weak condition. There came the proclamation of Germany's submarine policy. I was short 150,000 shares of stock, not because I knew the news was coming, but because I was going along the line of least resistance. What happened came out of a clear sky as far as my play was concerned. Of course, I took advantage of the situation and covered my shorts that day. It sounds very easy to say that all of you have to all you have to do is watch the tape, establish your resistance points, and be ready to trade along the line of least resistance as soon as you have determined it. But in actual practice, a man has to guard against many things, and most of all against himself, that is, against human nature. Now, he goes into a lot of other things, and he actually points out something here that comes out later in Market Wizards, but it's, it, it's called sentiment analysis. And he mentions it here. I'm trying to find it. Anyway, uh, here it is. Uh, trend in bull markets, bear items are ignored and bull news exaggerated and vice versa. This is actually the first observation of sentiment analysis. And it's an amazingly deep concept that he just simply mentions. So I, I can't tell you how much respect I have for this man. He's a genius of levels beyond what we've ever seen but he just mentioned something here that becomes a study in the year, in the decades to come a, a tremendous study that could fill volumes but it's absolutely true that bullish news items are ignored in bear markets and bearish news items are ignored in bull markets because the news doesn't really impact the market so we have a cup here forming and I wanted to clear out the lines I wanted to mention a couple more things about the technical analysis of this it's not something from Livermore but something that I've observed on my own and this is what I'll call the battering ram principle markets tend to do what I would call the opposite of a battering ram when they approach these points that Livermore has mentioned, for example, when we look at this line here, you can see that the trend is up. The line of least resistance is 31.25. You can see that when the price penetrates that point, the rally is very, very strong. Now, if you think about a battering ram, let's say someone storming a castle something like that if you remember in the old movies a battering ram it's you take it to the front gate of the let's say this price is the front gate of the castle and you back it up and ram it into the door and it doesn't break so what do you do you back it up farther and you ram it into the door and it doesn't break. So you back it up farther and you ram it in and it breaks through the door and you blast through the door. Now, markets are exactly the opposite because of the nature of buying and selling. Markets actually approach the door and they slowly approach it and then butt up against it and fall back but their falling back is less and less and as they're right up against the door without any 
pressure, they explode through the door. So I'll call it the reverse battering ram principle. That's the reason why you get these cups. You get these resistance breakouts. You get these things because, again, it all goes back to buying and selling, who's winning, who's losing, support and resistance. They're all based upon human behavior of the players that are in the market, why they're doing what they're doing. So we're seeing now another battering ram situation here with the price in this cup formation. The resistance is here at 3675. We are falling back a little bit, but we're going to test it either way. We may fall back, but we're going to find out what that price is. My, that's my bet. I, I could be wrong, but uh, my prediction is we will test that wall by coming closer and closer. When we get through, we will break through, and I predict we'll get roughly 40 when we do break through. And I think we're going to see that probably in the next two or three days, probably this week. So. We'll talk to you next time.